We've done some harvesting in the garden, and today we're gonna make dilly beans. Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Kevin and I have been busy in the gardens and we're starting to harvest some things, including green beans, which we're super excited about. Uh, before I get started canning a bunch, uh, pressure canning a bunch of green beans for the winter, first I'm gonna start out with making some dilly green beans, which is kind of like dill pickled green beans. Uh, so in our harvest, uh, we have enough uh, for I think at least six half pints of uh, dilly beans. And so out of the garden, I also harvested some fresh garlic and uh, some dill. Uh, so before we get started, I need to get these green beans into the sink and rinse them clean. Um, and then we'll come back and start cutting them up and putting them in the jars. Okay, the green beans are all washed. It doesn't take much because we don't spray any pesticides or anything on our garden. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, just adding a couple things to the jar before we start cutting and adding beans to the jar. Uh, one of those things is some garlic. Uh, now, the recipe I'm following calls for one clove of garlic per jar. Uh, I uh, planted my garlic really late. I should have planted it in the fall, uh, but instead I planted it in the spring, so mine's a little bit behind schedule. So I don't really have formed cloves. So I'm just gonna take some young garlic and cut it into pieces, and I'm gonna put one piece into each jar as I pack it with green beans. Uh, put a nice sized chunk in uh, the first jar. So we'll, we'll be doing this to every jar as we go along. And uh, we need to put in some dill. So I'm gonna put one little flower top like that, and then a couple of these leafy sprigs to make sure that it's going to have enough flavor inside of there. Okay, so really these are the only things that you would need to add in order to flavor them. There are a couple things you can add. Um, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seed in some of them. We've never done this before and so I wanna try it and see how we like it. You can also add a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes or cayenne pepper flakes. I'm not going to do that because we've got some kids in the house that aren't really into the spicy things. Uh, but if you like that, go ahead and add that too at this time. Okay, so now we need to start chopping the green beans. The first trick is to figure out how long your green beans need to be. And so I'm just going to put one inside of the green bean jar or inside of the canning jar and kind of mark with my finger about a half an inch below this rim here, this kind of neck rim. And that's where I'm going to mark this green bean. And then I'm going to use that as just a, a template, I guess, for the rest of my green beans. Uh, some people actually suggest that you mark on your cutting board the length, um, and then you can just add them up and size them up as you are cutting. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to put a mark on my cutting board. So when I'm cutting, I'm cutting off the stem end. You can leave the bottom end as long as it isn't blemished. So I'm just going to be cutting these, and as I get three or four of them, or six or whatever, I'm laying down uh, the jar and I'm just inserting it, so we're kind of going to pack it sideways until it's all filled up. Well that amount of green beans made four half pints of the dilly beans. Well, they're not dilly beans yet, but they will be shortly. Uh, so. You know, four isn't a lot, but it's a good start and we will be excited to have them anyway. So the next step is to make the brine, the pickling brine that's going to go inside of here. Um, and it is really easy. You guys, this is so easy. I hope you try it at home. So in a saucepan, a small saucepan, uh, we're going to start with two cups of filtered water. And we're gonna add two cups of white vinegar. And then we need salt. Uh, you can either use uh, pickling salt, which is also called canning salt, or you can use kosher salt, but the uh, measurements will be different. I have canning salt, pickling salt, that's the same thing, and I will use four teaspoons of salt in this brine mixture. If you have kosher salt, you would use two tablespoons. 
Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna put this on the oven, on the stove top, and I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna uh, stir it because we want the salt to dissolve. We're gonna bring that up to a boil and then we're gonna bring it back to the counter um, and fill these jars. Now I'm not gonna go step by step really, really thoroughly through the canning process. Uh, but I have done two videos that you may wanna check out. The first one is about the canning equipment that we'll be using. I go through each piece and tell you what it does and why you need them and those kinds of things. Um, I will go ahead and put a link to that video right up here. Uh, also, I did a very uh, thorough step-by-step -step, uh, video on how to water bath can. We're gonna be using the water bath canning method today. Uh, I'm not going to, to do really extensive go through on that, uh, but you can check that out. And if you have never canned before, please go through that video and I'll put a link to that right up here as well. Okay, our brine is all set and ready. So it's time to start putting it inside these jars. Uh, so I'm gonna use a canning funnel um, and uh, just a regular old ladle. And I'm gonna ladle this brine into each jar until it's one half of an inch, until the brine is one half an inch from the top of the jar. When I think it's about right, I'm gonna check. I could use a little bit more. This tool measures for you. It's almost right on, but I also first need to get all of the, uh, the air bubbles out. So I'm just gonna stick this measuring tool down into uh, the jar to get out any trapped air bubbles because that will affect, affect uh, the level of the brine. Let me double check here. I could use just a teeny bit more. That is good. I'm gonna wipe off the rim of the jar to make sure that there's no debris or anything sticky on there. I'm gonna put on a lid and the ring. Now, just recently there's been a change in the like canning rules. Um, they said that you don't need to boil or warm your lids anymore. So that actually uh, saves some time and energy. Okay, so that one is ready. I'm gonna put it into uh, the pot of hot water that I've already started uh, warming up, okay? Okay, the last one is going in there. I'm gonna cover it and turn the heat back on high. Now, once that water reaches boiling, I'm gonna set a timer and we're going to uh, process that for 10 minutes. At 10 minutes, I'm gonna turn off the heat and open the lid and let it sit in there for another five minutes before taking it out. Okay, they're all finished. Let's take them out and see what they look like. So far, so good. Okay, so we are not going to touch these jars for 24 hours to make sure that they cool properly and they seal. They'll make a nice popping noise when the, when the, uh, the seal uh, makes the suction. Um, and so that's what we're looking for now, but we're not gonna touch them. We don't wanna affect anything. Um, now the pickling you know, action in here and the taste and the flavors and everything, you wanna wait at least a week but two weeks if you possibly can before you open them up and try them. Uh, but you know what, you guys, this was so simple and I hope that you realize through this video how simple making dilly beans is. Uh, so I want you to try it. Go ahead and do that and let me know what you think. Well, I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is the first time that you're visiting our homestead, right now is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. If you're one of our traditionalists that comes back five days a week for every one of our new videos, you guys, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. 
Take care and God bless.